Welcome to High Performance, the podcast featuring Josh Vegan and Alexander Phillips. Alexander, today we're going to talk about the speed of life and how to handle growth spurts. And I think that, you know, um, a lot of people have kind of said to me, you know, geez, I just remember when. And, you know, what I, what I always say to people is, is that, you know, what it is right now is not what it's going to be in the future. And what it was will never happen again. And I think that that's the thing is, is that um, has the world in any way sped up in the course of the last 10 years? And how do you cope with that new demand and that new pressure as things get faster? Josh, I think it's 10 times faster than what it was 10 years ago. Technology, you know, social media, the speed of internet. You know, like the minute we put a property online, we get an inquiry within 30 seconds. So, you know, the, back in the day, 10 years ago, you, people weren't that, that fast because, you know, I suppose they weren't as busy and time poor. As, as the years go on, you know, people get busier and time poor. And, and I look at the gym that I go to, um, two years ago, the, the people that would sign in, before 6 a.m. in the morning was around 200. Now it's 500 every single morning. So what what that basically means is people are trying to find more hours in the day to get more things done because of the demands out there. You know, people are working longer for less money. And obviously the advent of, of email was a massive change, but most importantly, the mobile phone. And the mobile phone has fundamentally changed our lives because now we've got accessibility to so much information and so many connections in such a period of time. And you know, back in the old days, you'd be in a position, you might know some local people in your community and that might be a couple of hundred. And now in our careers, we know a couple of thousand. And this is the challenge is that we're trying to keep up with everything that's going on in terms of that overwhelm. So what are some of those tips and tricks that agents could do to either slow life down a little bit or get a little bit more back in control as the speed of that life continues to get out of control. Josh, I actually think it's about getting faster and making the consumer aware of how to be, you know, be along the ride with you and and how quickly things can happen. I think it really comes back to you as an agent, what you actually do to set that up. You know, the set up to sell meeting with a vendor all that, you know, the eighty percent of the properties we sell, you meet the buyer in the first Saturday, you know, and it might go online on at three o'clock on a Friday and that buyer's already there on a Saturday wanting to buy it and how you actually set that up. But it's also then that buyer know how quickly things can move. And if you're not prepared financially, you don't have a solicitor, you don't have a deposit available, you don't understand the process, well, you're going to miss out. So you as an agent need to explain that process to the buyer on exactly what can happen, the different scenarios. So they're really prepared in obviously moving quickly so they don't they get the best opportunity of, of obviously trying to secure a property same with tenants same with landlords you know that th- there's many aspects here that you've got to be yeah you know, you've got to have on board ready to go so you've got to have your building inspections already done your strata reports already done you've got to have a solicitor on standby on a saturday if you meet a buyer that's ready to go you've got to have all these things in place that when that consumer wants to move quickly, you can move with them. And I find people that have urgency generally will pay more or, or pay, you know, or, or obviously want to secure a property a lot faster than anyone else. You can get more money out of them. I think that's the big thing too is, is that, you know, as an agent, you, you've got to have some coping mechanisms. And I think that one of the best coping mechanisms <laughs> that there is is actually a task list. And that ability to just be able to simply write down a task list of all the different things that are going on and then actually start go through that list and say, okay, which of the things here are really critical for me to get done? Which are the ones that are really important that are gonna, is going to push our business forward to the position that we want to get it into rather than just manage for the day? And I think that this reflective thinking about what's gone well for us and what we're going to be doing in the future makes a massive difference because it pulls you out from being tactically always in the day to getting a bit more strategic about what you're doing. And one of my favorite exercises to do with people is to do a little thing called strengths, weaknesses, and trends. And so you sit down and you write down what are all your strengths right now? What are the weaknesses that you've got right now? And what are the trends that you're starting to identify? And you've got to start to realize that in order to manage the speed, you've got to get firmer about how you run that diary. Why is that important for agents to get clear about what they want to get done for the day? And also too, to get control over that diary in the way they work with the customer. Um, it, it gives you structure and process and gets you in the right mind frame to make sure that, that you're moving quickly and understanding what needs to be done and you're not flustered and, and, and always sort of worried about what's going what's to potentially happen. Like Josh, straight after us today, I've got an appraisal at 8.15, but I spent 20 minutes before I came here writing out notes on that appraisal and working out who my competition is what they're looking for in an agent and I'm really prepared the minute I leave here jump in my car 15 minutes later I'm appraising a property in Paddington but I'm fully armed with everything that I need to so I go in there with the right right mindset for any question that might be thrown at me so 
preparation is crucial and diary management is a part of that so preparing your diary a day before the next is is really important i think too that like um you know allowing people to actually see what the diary looks like particularly a partner at home or someone that's going to be in the office and so they've got clarity about when to communicate with you and when not and that ultimately you need to have the right time and space for the things that are critically important and a lot of this is what we call commitment creep where you start saying yes to a lot of things when you should actually be in a position of saying I can't actually help you with that. And that's actually an important part of career growth is actually really defining what's important for what you're going to be doing in the type of agent that you're becoming. One of the other things too, Alex, is about people just getting clarity about how they actually fuel their body and keeping that level of energy consistently because as more demands come, you're going to need more resource to do it. What are some things that you do in order to make sure that you've got the level of resource and energy that's required to be excellent as you go out there and perform as an agent? Yeah, I think, Josh, it's obviously knowing, you know, how quick your, your metabolism works, you know, when you're, it's going to be ups and downs with your energy and, and trying to combat that with the type of food you eat, when you eat, uh, the amount of times you eat a day uh, and planning around that. So like even when I look at my diary the day in advance, I'm thinking, okay, when do I need to eat? Because if I'm out of the office three hours and I haven't eaten and I've that last appraisal, I'm going to be off the ball and I'll miss a business. So I think it's about understanding what what you know foods are good for you you know i think every person's different and you know i love carbohydrates so i don't have carbohydrates i've got no energy so i le- eat a lot of carbs and i'm not shy about that where some people you know obviously don't eat carbs because they're, they're worried about obviously what people are telling them but therefore the energies might, might be low so i think it's important to understand that when, when when you might be low on energy to cut out sugars eat the right type of food to you know for me if i don't go to the gym in the morning i'm a little bit off and i don't go at night because i can't sleep because my heart's going too fast so it's understanding when you're at, at your maximum and when i'm at my maximum is at 7 30 to 8 30 in the morning that's when i smash out the most amount of calls I always say this to people that ultimately, you know, get prepared for growth. It's going to happen. And sometimes you're going to need some people that are going to need to be around you. They're going to help you. It could be a cleaner that comes in to clean your house once or twice a week. It could be someone that buys buys groceries and puts them in the fridge. It could be someone who fuels your car. It could be someone who's in a position that helps you with some of your dry cleaning and some of the other activities that are going on, you know, so you can actually spend more time in it. And I said this to a client recently where, you know, she's built a really good quality business. And she said, Josh, seven years ago, I would never have imagined that life would get like this where I was all of a sudden out the front of Woolworths trying to buy breakfast for my kids for that morning on the way to school because I just didn't get prepared around that. But she said, I've also never been in a position that I'm now about to write 700000 for the year. So she said, I've never been able to do that. And she's in a regional part of Australia, you know, with an average sale price around the 350000 mark. So she's pacing. And I said to her, so Julie, you know, the number one thing you got to do here is you just got to decide what's really important. And you want to be a great mum. I get that. How critical is it for you to do the shopping at Woolworths? Is that something that you actually naturally love doing? Or is there another mum that you know that you could pay 20 bucks to that could go and do that for you and actually make everything is actually organized? at home and ready to go and she said you know what Josh I don't actually enjoy shopping that much I enjoy preparing meals for my family I said okay great so why don't we get two or three days a week where you actually are home to prepare the meals for the family but let's cut out having to go and buy the food so you can be more focused around that and I think that as the speed of life improves get clear about what are the things that are critical and this always leads me back to one of my favorite quotes from my dad where he said that it's always what you do when things are are quiet that makes a massive difference when things get busy so fill your car petrol on a Sunday, get prepared well in advance so that when you're busy Monday to Friday, you don't have to worry about all of those challenges and learn to deal with the new speed of life because it's here forever and it will be in a position that it's only going to get faster. 